So every morning we wake up and we check our phones. We check to see how many likes our pics got, our friends' pics got, and even our frenemies got on Facebook and Instagram. And then we go on Snapchat to see what amazing adventures our friends have been up to. And everyone's life seems so perfect. Oftentimes, we compare our own lives with the lives of others that we see on social media. And then we're saddened. We start to think about how we can mask our sadness and portray a happy life. And social media has made us a little obsessed with this notion of having a perfect life. And when we don't feel like our lives are perfect, we become unhappy. And there are so many reasons why we are sad. One of which is the fact that we're forgetting that this life was never meant to be perfect. Every single one of us on earth is tested in one way or another. And how can I say that with such confidence? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very clear that this world isn't Jannah, so it isn't perfect. And He told us, He said, and we will surely test you with something of fear. Now what is fear? Fear is an emotion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test us with our emotions. And then he said, and hunger, and a loss of wealth, and lives, and fruits, all things that may make us sad or anxious. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us hope and says, give glad tidings to the patient. And sometimes shaitan tricks us, and he tells us that if we're feeling sad or anxious, that that means that we don't have faith, that that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is angry with us. And that's not true. Sadness and anxiety are a part of this life. Sadness and anxiety are natural emotions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created in us. And everyone experiences these feelings. And a certain degree of worry and anxiety exists in every single one of us and it's completely normal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a wide range of emotions and that we will all experience these emotions, even the prophets, peace and blessings be upon them all, experience sadness and anxiety. We all know that Prophet Ya'qub was so sad when he was separated from his son Yusuf. So sad that he cried so much that he lost his eyesight, subhanAllah. And we know that Maryam, a woman who the Prophet wasallam told us, perfected her faith. One of the very few women who actually perfected her faith. That while she was giving birth, she was so anxious, she was so sad, that she actually said, I wish I had died before this and I was long forgotten. SubhanAllah. We even know that our beloved Prophet wasallam experienced sadness in his life. There was even a period of time in his life called Amul Huzun, the year or the time of sadness. And when experiencing times of distress, we have to remember that yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did tell us. He gave us the heads up and told us that we were going to be tested. But guess what? At the same time, he said, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not burden a soul more than it can bear. So know that you are strong and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that we can overcome whatever challenges come our way. And that the fact is, is that we're given these challenges because He knows we're strong enough to handle them. And oftentimes we underestimate our abilities. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how resilient and strong He created us. I would like to share with you a few tips to help us through difficult times. I'd like to share with you five things that we can do to help ourselves or encourage someone else to do when they're experiencing sadness, worry, or unpleasant thoughts. 
And these five tips are from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu but also backed by the latest scientific and psychological research. And there are so many factors in life that we can't control. But these are things that we can actually start doing right now. Number one, your breath. We can change the way we feel and change our emotions by using our breaths. Now you don't believe me, right? But the research suggests that certain types of breathing are extremely effective in helping with depression and anxiety. And I'd like to show you all how. Place one hand on your chest and one on your stomach. Bismillah. And at the count of three, not yet, at the count of three, I'm going to ask you to inhale through your nose and I'm going to hold up five seconds and you're going to hold that inhale for five seconds. So you're going to take a big inhale and it's going to take you five seconds to do it like this. Okay, and then I'm going to ask you to hold it for five seconds and I'll give you the cue. And then I'm going to ask you to release it slowly for five seconds, okay? Okay, bismillah. One, two, three. Inhale. One, two, three, four, five. Hold it. One, two, three, four, five. Exhale slowly. One, two, three, four, five. Really simple, right? But the research proves that doing that about five times, just the inhale, holding, exhale, holding, five times can lower your levels of anxiety and sadness. Doing this five times can significantly help and learning to use your breath is a very powerful tool. And you know what's so awesome about this powerful tool? You're doing it anyways. It's free, it's easy, it doesn't require any equipment or anything external and you can do it anytime, anywhere, inshallah. Number two is turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through salah, dua, and Quran. Many studies, now these are secular scientific studies, prove that prayer helps lessen the feelings of depression and anxiety, subhanAllah. And we all know that when the Prophet Sallallahu was feeling sadness or anxious or he was going through difficulty, he would rush to prayer. Right? Uh, but did you know that when the Prophet ﷺ was asked by Aisha radiallahu anha, she asked him, Ya Rasulullah, what was the saddest, most difficult day of your life, time of your life? He said, it was the time right after Khadija radiallahu anha passed away and his uncle passed away and he had went to Ta'if to make da'wah and they ridiculed him and they actually stoned him. So he said that was the most difficult time of his life. But did you know that right after this difficult time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and gifted us all the ultimate remedy for anxiety and sadness and depression and negative thoughts and feelings? And that is our five daily prayers. Right after Ta'if, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invited the Prophet sallallahu to the Isra and Mi'raj. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted the Prophet the five daily prayers and told him the timings. And these are so effective, subhanAllah. Just your salah, especially at the times of day, they're so effective in treating sadness. Dua is also a very powerful tool. We all know that, right? We all have heard the lectures about dua. And I want you all to close your eyes, please. And I want you to think of something that made you sad or anxious recently. Maybe you were anxious about the results of your blood work or sad about maybe your spouse losing their job or maybe you're worried about an upcoming exam, whatever it may be. By the way, are your eyes closed? Now I want you to reflect upon this beautiful verse. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وقال ربكم ادعوني أستجب لكم and your Lord said call upon me and I will surely most definitely respond to you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right now hears you and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shy and generous he's shy that if we ask him for something that he wouldn't give us it and he's generous in the fact that he gives us more than we ask for so I want you right 
right now to make a dua, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because each and every one of us is going through something difficult. And I want you to have certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hearing you and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond to you. Did you know that every morning and every evening, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam actually asked Allah, he made a dua to Allah to protect him from depression and anxiety. And he taught us to do the same every single day. Once he saw a man who was sad and anxious and he told him, shall I not teach you something that if you say it, Allah will remove your worry and relieve your debt. And the man said, of course, yes, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, say this every morning and every evening, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazan wa a'udhu bika min al-ajzi wal-kasal wa a'udhu bika min al-jubni wal-bukhl wa a'udhu bika min ghalabat al-dayn wa kahr al-rijal. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from anxiety and sadness. I seek refuge in you, Ya Allah, from inability and laziness. I seek refuge in you, Ya Allah, from cowardice and miserliness. And I seek refuge in you, Ya Allah, from being overwhelmed by debt and the force of men. SubhanAllah. And the Sahabi, who the Prophet ﷺ taught this dua to, said, I did this recommendation of the Prophet وسلم, and I swear, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eased my anxieties and my burden of debt. SubhanAllah. Take time out to recite and to reflect upon the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the Qur'an a healing and he says it's a healer of the heart. Connect with the Qur'an daily. You know, subhanAllah, Ramadan is around the corner and Ramadan is the month of Qur'an. Make sure that you start from now, even if it's just a verse a day. Make that connection with the healer of the hearts, with the Qur'an. Number three, look for the good. And when you do, I promise it will grow. Each and every one of us is blessed in so many different ways. And shaitan whispers and he gets us to focus and pay attention to what's going wrong in our lives and to completely forget everything that's going right. So pay attention to the good and actually look for it. Think of blessings in your life and be grateful for them. There are so many countless studies that prove that practicing gratitude does wonders for our mental and emotional health. And it helps, especially with depression and anxiety. And when we practice gratitude, we increase the levels of dopamine and serotonin in our brains, which cause us to be happier. And if you can't think of something good that's going on in your life, I'm going to remind you of this amazing hadith in which the Prophet wasallam said, no fatigue, nor disease, nor sorrow, nor sadness, nor hurt, nor distress befalls a Muslim, even if they were just pricked with a thorn, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expiates some of their sins for that. So when you're going through a hard time, if you can't think of something to be grateful for, be grateful for the fact that while you're going through this hard time, your sins are getting erased. Alhamdulillah. And remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proclaimed, He made an announcement. If you are grateful, I will surely increase you. Alhamdulillah. Number four, smile. Many studies suggest that even when you force a smile, it can lead to a change in your mood. They've even done a study where they've asked subjects to put something in their mouth to force their lips to go up. And through that study, they found that even though it was forced, it was a piece of plastic in their mouth, their mood changed and they became happier just by faking a smile. And you know, the Prophet ﷺ, he told us, don't belittle any good deeds. And don't belittle even if you were to meet your brother or sister with a smiling face. And so remember that you have the ability right now to smile. Do it, smile, try it. And remember, it's a charity. Right? The Prophet ﷺ said to smile in your brother's face or your sister's face is a charity. Number five, last but not least, spend time with your loved ones. Family support is so beneficial. And when the Prophet ﷺ felt anxious, felt afraid, was worried, who did he go to? He went to Khadija radiallahu anha. 
and he found that support in her. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us as social creatures. If you're feeling sad, reach out to someone. I recently read a study that was very interesting. They found out that physical touch from someone you know, someone you care about, can be as effective as antidepressants. So they took women who were experiencing postpartum depression and they had their husbands hug them, touch them, and then they monitored them. And they found that the results were very significant. They were amazing that it reduced the depression in these women, subhanAllah. In another study that I read, they had people go into an MRI machine and they would tell them, we're going to zap you on your foot and it's going to hurt. And when no one was around and they got zapped, it was very painful. When a stranger was with them holding their hand, it was still painful. But when they brought a loved one in and the loved one held their hand, the parts of their brain that processed pain didn't light up like they did before. So they found out that physical touch is so effective. And subhanAllah, there are so many chemicals that are released in our body like oxytocin that make us feel good when we're touched. And think about it. The Prophet wasallam, he used to hug and shake hands and embrace his companions and his loved ones. And we're even taught and encouraged as Muslims to do what? To shake each other's hands, right? The Prophet wasallam, said that when you shake someone's hands, your sins fall. SubhanAllah. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his beautiful names and his perfect attributes to make the Qur'an a healing for us all. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He replaces our sadness with happiness and joy and our anxiety with peace of mind. 